Here's an excellent question to test your math skills as well as numerical reasoning skills. You need to count all one dollar bills as well as quarters. And you need to determine how much money does clerk have. You have four different choices. Choice A, $12.25. Choice B, $16.25. Choice C, $18.25. And last but not least, choice D, $21.25. Make sure to pause this video and count all the dollar bills in the air as well as coins on the ground. Give yourself 15 to 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. I did my counting. Did you do yours? Let me explain you my version of the solution. And if you have a different answer, please make sure to post in comments. I counted 12 $1 bills as well as 25 quarters. Let me count them all for you. Let's start with the dollar bills. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now let's do the same thing for the quarters. Let's start with the left side, which has 15 quarters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And now let's do the same thing, but for the right side, which has 10 quarters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And now we are ready to do the math. Obviously, 12 $1 bills is $12. 15 quarters is $3.75. 10 quarters is $2.50. $12 plus $2.50 plus $3.75 equals 1825. Did you count differently? Do you have a different answer? Please make sure to post your solution in comments. Hi there, this is Vadim. And in this video, I would like to get you ready for the employment assessment test. As you might be well aware, organizations nowadays would like to make sure that they hire the most qualified candidate. This is why they use pre-employment hiring exam to make sure a candidate is prepared to succeed on the job. There are various assessment test questions employers use based on the job candidate might be applying for. The examples are IQ and aptitude questions, logical reasoning questions, math reasoning, numerical reasoning, analytical skills questions, and a lot of others. In this video, I am going to share with you some examples of the questions we frequently see on the test. Let's go ahead and get started. Here is an exceptional question to test your knowledge of English. You need to build English alphabet word, and you present it with nine different letters. The letters are P, C, E, T, R, J, R, O, O. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the word. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. This is about as much time you get on the real test. Maybe pause this video to see if you can build a mental combination of letters that can build the word. And on my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have other ways to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. I came up with the English word projector. Let me spell it for you. P-R-O-J-E-C-T-O-R. -E and the definition is, projector is an optical device which is used to project an image onto a surface. Projector typically takes the images generated by a computer or a Blu-ray player and reproduces them on the screen. Most commonly used projectors create an image by shining a light through small transparent lenses, but some new types of projectors can project an image directly by using lasers. Did you solve it on your own? In the past, when I posted similar questions, I received a lot of comments about how to solve them correctly. And here are some tips I'd like to share with you to help you solve these types of challenges in the future. One idea might be to separate the consonants from the vowels. For example, the consonants here are P, C, R, T, J, R, and the vowels are E, O, and O. As you separate them, you can start building the word. For example, P, R, O is the set of letters that can start the correct word projector and can lead you to the correct answer. 
Another idea might be is to boost your vocabulary. You can read more or try to play these types of games and practice on the pen and paper during the test to create a list of possible combinations until you come up with the right solution. Hopefully these tips are helpful and allow you to do better on your next test. A lot of viewers on this channel ask me how to increase their IQ scores. Even though methods might be different from person to person, let me share with you three ways that help me to stay in shape. I love listening to classical music. I believe that this helps improve your analytical skills as well as spatial reasoning skills. Also, I like playing sports and I go to the gym to do vigorous exercises. I think this helps me to increase oxygen levels in the blood as well as to keep your brain more active. After a certain age, staying active helps you to increase your reactions as well as IQ. And last but not least, I like to stay hydrated. I drink a lot of green tea, Earl Grey tea, coffee, and vitamin water throughout the day to help me stay energized. You can use these tips to prepare specifically for the test or to change your daily habits and stay sharper day after day. Do you have tips of your own on how to keep your brain in shape? Please make sure to share and comment so we can all learn. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's an interesting and very unusual question where you need to count all dollar signs in the image. You're presented with the flower image. Image has many dollar signs here and you need to select the final answer out of four different choices. Choice A, six, choice B, seven, choice C, eight, and choice D, nine. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can count all possible options. Ready or not, on my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I counted eight dollar signs. So my answer is choice C. The answer is C because there are six signs in the dollar bills as flower petals. One sign is in the middle of the flower and then there is a one sign at the bottom of the flower base. Do you have a different answer? Please make sure to share in comments. Here's a very interesting question for you where you need to find the family relationship. A group of people is gathered for a dinner. Bella is a daughter of George's brother. George's brother is Jack and Jack's wife is Emily. Emily has other children because Emily is a mother of Anna. What is the relationship between Anna and Bella? And you need to select the relationship out of four different choices. Choice A, they are nieces. Choice B, they are sisters. Choice C, they are cousins. And choice D, they are just friends. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. And once ready, make sure to post your answer in comments. This would allow me to give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here is an exceptional question to test your analytical skills. You're presented with pictures of four animals. Zebra, lion, tiger and horse. And you need to determine which animal doesn't belong to the group. Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. What's interesting is that there is an unexpected twist to this question and I'll share it with you after I share the answer. Are you ready? I am moving forward to share with you the correct solution. And obviously, if you have a different thought process, please make sure to share in comments. As you might have figured out, the answer is choice D, horse. And the reason is, is that the zebra, tiger and lion are all wild animals and only the horse can be domesticated. And here is the twist and unexpected fact. If you think the zebra can be domesticated, think again. Zebras, in fact, are very aggressive and very dangerous animals, despite the peaceful look. Zebras have been known to kick each other to death. They will attack and bite any humans that come close. And there are also some accounts of zebras killing lions. I found this information very interesting when I was doing my research. If you have any other thoughts or any rationale for the particular answer, please make sure to share in comments. If you find the content of the channel helpful, you can help us by becoming a member. For example, if you are getting ready for employment test 
and might wonder how you can download the value pack, we'll give you one reason to download and save. And this is by becoming a YouTube member. For example, if you become Platinum member, you can download Employment Assessment Test Preparation Bundle. We also frequently publish exclusive content for members only to help you stay sharp and get ready for the test. To become a member, all you need to do is to navigate to howtoanalyzedata.net slash membership. You can type the link directly in your browser or follow the link in the description of this video. Thank you for your endorsement, support, and patronage. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's a very interesting question where you present it with unusual shape and you need to calculate the missing number. You have four different choices to choose from for the final answer. Choice A, 229. Choice B, 287. Choice C, 352. And choice D, 390. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the final answer. I am pretty sure you solved it. This is why on my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. But obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. What's interesting is that this question tests your attention as well as pattern recognition skills. You can see that there are numbers around the square and there is one number 03 around the square. The key to detect the pattern here is to do mental calculations inside your head. The real pattern is that the next number is calculated as previous number multiplied by 3 plus 3. So let's look at how calculations are done. An initial value is 0, 03. Then we start the calculations at 9 o'clock. The first number is 12, then the next number is 42, the following number is 129, and then comes the missing number. Let's look at the specific calculations. 9 o'clock calculation. 3, which is initial number, multiplied by 3 plus 3. 9 plus 3 equals 12. Let's move to the 12 o'clock number. 12 o'clock is calculated as 12 multiplied by 3 plus 3, which equals 39 plus 3, which equals 42. Then we come to the 3 o'clock calculations. 42 multiplied by 3 plus 3, which equals 126 plus 3, which equals 129. And then the missing number, if you follow the pattern, 6 o'clock number is calculated as 129 multiplied by 3 plus 3, which equals 387 plus 3, which equals 390. So the correct choice here is choice D, 390. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Are you ready for the surprise? I have a challenge for you to practice your skills you need to calculate the missing number. You are presented with three pyramids and each pyramid has numbers around the pyramid as well as in the middle. The first pyramid has numbers 1, 16, 3 and 4 in the middle. Second pyramid has numbers 6, 36, 3 and then number 4 again in the middle. The third pyramid has numbers 16, 100 then comes the missing number and then number 5 in the middle and you have four different choices to find the missing number. Choice A, 3, choice B, 4, choice C, 5, and choice D, 6. Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. And once you solved it, please make sure to post your answer in comments. This would allow me to give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck finding the solution. Here's an amazing question where you are presented with four word pairs and you need to find the item that does not belong to the group. The first pair is flower and petal. The second pair is circle and arc. The third pair is cover and page. And last but not the least, fourth pair is chair and chairperson. You need to select the word pair that does not belong to the group. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. Radio Net, I am moving forward to share with you my version. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The key here is to determine the relationship between the objects. And in all object pairs, one object is part of another. Let's look at the examples. Petal is part of the flower. Arc is part of the circle. And cover is part of the book. The only word pair where this rule does not work is chair and chairperson. Even though this object sounds similar, they are not part of each other. 
So the correct answer is choice D, chair and chairperson. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. As you might be well aware, the fastest way to learn and prepare for the test is by doing hands-on practice exercises. This is why we prepared practice materials for you to download so you can learn faster. All you need to do is to navigate to howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. You can type this link directly in your browser or follow the link in the description of this video. Thank you for your endorsement, support, and patronage. And now, let's continue to get you ready for the test. Here's a very interesting problem which tests your analytical skills. You're presented with three circles, and one circle is missing. You need to select the missing circle out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. I think the answer here is obvious, but please make sure to make your selection. And on my end, I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. As you might have noticed, there is another set of lines inside the circles. And four circles can be grouped together, forming a square inside. So the correct choice here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now here's the question for you to test your skills. You need to find the missing shape to build a square. You have four different choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the correct answer? Give yourself a little bit of time and when you're ready, please make sure to post your answer in comments. This would allow me to give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here is a very interesting question where you need to calculate percentage of Tesla Model S sales in 2023. You are presented with the bar chart, which shows sales for the periods of 2021, 2022, 2023, and 2024. And each section has sales for Model X, Model Y, and Model S. Based on the information presented, you need to determine which number is correct out of four different choices. Choice A, 20%, choice B, 27%, choice C, 33%, and then choice D, 40%. Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Hopefully you figured it out because I'm moving forward to share the final answer with you. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. First, let's take a close look at the 2023 sales. You can see that we sold 8 units of Model X, we sold 12 units of Model Y, and then 10 units of Model S. So total units sold in 2023 would be 8 plus 12 plus 10 equals 30. Now let's determine the percentage. We sold 10 units of Model S in 2023, which is one third of the 30 units in total. So the correct choice here is one third of 100%, which is approximately 33%. So the answer here is choice 3, 33%. Hopefully you figured this out and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's an amazing question to test your math skills. You're presented with simple expression and you need to calculate the value of this expression. You have four different choices. Choice A, 1. Choice B, 3. Choice C, 7. And then choice D, 9. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can calculate the solution. Ready or not, I am moving forward to share with you the correct answer. As you might have guessed, the correct answer here is choice A, 1. But why? If you look at the expression closely, you will see that the first part that would need to be calculated is the division, dividing 3 by 1 third. To emphasize this, I put this expression into red parentheses. When you calculate 3 divided by 1 third, you will get to the result of 9. And then you need to do sequentially subtraction and then addition. 9 minus 9 equals 0, plus 1 equals 1. This is the reason the correct choice here is choice A, 1. And then one last important reminder is that the sequence is determined based on the acronym PEMDAS. The sequence is driven by parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Hopefully you refreshed your memory from middle school 
and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. Here's a wonderful question to test your analytical skills. You're presented with the series of shapes in the boxes. The first box has the arrow pointing left. Second box has triangle pointing left. Third box has a square. And then comes the box with the missing shape. You have four different choices to choose from. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am moving forward to reveal you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better ideas on how to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. You're probably tired of hearing it on this channel, but the key to solve these types of challenges is to find the pattern. And the pattern here is that the sides of the shape are increasing by one in each sequence. So for example, if you look at the first shape, it has two sides, and the number continuously increases to three and four sides respectively, which means that the missing shape should have the five sides. And only shape B has five sides. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. If the content was helpful, please give us a like and consider subscribing. This is the way for you to tell us that you need more content like this and we'll make sure to deliver it for you in the future. For links and resources referenced in this video, please check the description. You can also go directly to our website howtoanalyzedata.net to find what you're looking for and download the materials. We really thank you for your endorsement, support and patronage of this channel. Please leave feedback, suggestions or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.